Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Aussie Flipper. My name is Matt Diedrich and I am an online reseller. In today's episode, I wanted to take you through my five key tips for listing your items on Facebook Marketplace. And I'm gonna get into it right now. Tip number one. Tip number one, guys, is to do your research prior to listing your item. And what I mean by that is finding out what the right price is for your item. It's a very, very common step that a lot of people just don't bother to put the time and the effort into. And that causes some real issues in trying to sell the item, whether it's selling the item under what it's actually worth or putting it at too high a price that just simply won't get any interest. A great way to do this is to jump onto eBay and do a filtered search of the sold items that match your item description. That way, you'll get a good ballpark figure of what your item is actually worth, and you'll be able to comfortably list it knowing that you'll probably get some interest. The other thing that I like to do for tip number two, tip number two, I like to always increase my price by a couple of dollars to allow for two things. There's first, I'm gonna always try and drop the price. I'm gonna drop the price after a few days to create urgency. It's a really good tactic that's brought me a lot of interest from people that might wanna buy my item, but not at the price that I've currently listed it at. As soon as they see that I've dropped the price, they see that there's a bit of urgency for me to wanna to get rid of the item, and that might prompt them to send me a message. I've seen it happen quite a lot, and I've used it quite a bit. The second tactic, obviously, for increasing my price uh, initially on the listing is that they will always try and negotiate. A perfect example of all of this would be if I've got an item for $50 and I've checked on market, I've checked on eBay and it is worth $50, I'll list it on Facebook Marketplace for $60. One, because I'm gonna drop it down to 55 myself if it hasn't sold for 60. And two, I think that person as a buyer would offer me $50 to buy the item. I always wanted to get $50, but I've allowed that room for it to come back down to $50 after all of that's taken place. Two key steps. Do your research to find the right price and always put a little bit of mayo on top to make sure you can bring it down to the price that you want to sell it for. Tip number three. Tip number three is to prepare your item for photo day. So what I mean by that is if you've found an item or if you've bought an item that you want to sell, maybe it's a little bit damaged, maybe it's a little bit dirty, maybe it needs some repair. Just There might be just something you need to tweak on the product before you go ahead and take your photos. That will vastly improve the photos by doing that little bit of work prior. So if you've got a set of clothes and it's got a little tear in it, I would maybe stitch that tear up before you take your photos. Or if you've got a surfboard and you wanna scrub it up and make sure it's looking good before you put it on for sale, I would encourage you to do that. It will add value to your product and it will make you sell the product for more. Tip number four. Tip number four is take amazing photos. You really, really must take great photos when you're posting your item on, on Facebook. Everyone's gonna be looking at that photo to know that that is the item they're gonna buy. So it needs to be in great presentation for them to wanna go, yeah, I wanna buy that. There's a couple of things to consider when you're taking photos. One is that you need a really clear background. If you've got a single item that you wanna sell, make sure that's the only thing in the photo obviously with a nice background that's clear behind it. You just wanna make sure you're focusing in on the pure item that you're trying to sell. Here's an example of a really bad photo. This person's trying to sell some clothes. They haven't even bothered to take them out of their packaging. They've left them all chucked in the, in the bag and they've just taken a photo from the top and that's it. They've put the size in there, which is great, but they've just left it at that and that is terrible. Here is an example of a good photo. This is probably a use of the same item of clothing, but they've actually put them all out and they've lined them all out. You can clearly see how many there are. You can clearly see what they look like and the condition that they're in and the, dif the different colors that they have. So that's a much easier way to go about it. It, it, will, it will help the buyer know that they want to buy the item. Tip number five, guys, is the details and the description matter. So. There's a couple of things that you need to really take consideration on when you're filling in the description area. You wanna make sure that you're always telling the truth. So if there's anything about your item that isn't great, if there's any marks, or any rips or tears, you really wanna be letting your person know about that in the description. The last thing you want is that person to come all the way to your house to pick up the item and then there's an issue with it that you didn't actually let people know about in the description. So always tell the truth, put that in there. The other thing I like to do is I always like to add the pickup location in the description. A lot of people will often jump on and send you a message and say, hey, really interested, where are you located? It's annoying because you've got a lot of items that you're, you're listing and you're having to tell people all the time. Often at times, people are too far away from your suburb and they don't want to even come in the first place. So always actually list where your item is for pickup. That way people will know if they actually can come and pick it up. 
Next one is to always jump onto the website and find some information on the product with a few bullet points. It'll go a long way to get letting your person know exactly what the product is that they're getting. All the features and the benefits of what you have to sell should be included in the description. Rather than just saying the condition of the item, a few features of the item in there on the description is a good thing too. And by doing this, really what's happening is you're giving them everything. You're telling them the brand, the size, you're telling them any issues, you're completely telling the truth putting all the features in there, um, you're telling them where the pickup is, you've got the right price, you've got great photos. So pretty much everything's done. The way I like to do it is that if everything's completed and it's all out there in the listing, the very next step for the purchaser is to them to say, look, I know everything and I wanna buy the item. So the message that you should receive as the seller should just be, when can I collect? If you've got a lot of items on Facebook Marketplace, the last thing you wanna do is to be sitting there repeating yourself with multiple messages. So put it all into the details, all into the description, and you should hopefully just have uh, people wanting to buy your item message you on Marketplace. So they are my five key tips for listing an item on Facebook Marketplace. If you've liked this video, please remember to give me a like and a subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. I'm already up to about 35 uh, subscribers at the moment, so I'm really excited. It's um, been a great couple of weeks to start the channel. Um, next week, I'll be tuning in with a bit more what sold and uh, a few more educational type videos as well. But um, thanks very much, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.